racing in the magic nearly and skirt the wall is taken over and kicked away. Skirt the wall in front and skirt the wall is all too good. Skirt the wall one by length and a half. Welcome to this week's edition of The Final Gallop. It is episode 276 and proudly supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group and Play Up. This week we are going to preview our 10 runners for Saturday, Saturday's Tattersall's race day at Doom. Good morning Tony. It was a good result for the stable last Saturday at Eagle Farm with the now gelding Mullane uh, winning on resumption and a stable Quinella with the progressive mares Blue Spinel and Black One Beauty. Yeah, good morning Claire, good morning everyone. Uh, yeah, it was a good day last Saturday at Eagle Farm. Amazed at how that track played Yes. after, after we spoke rain. here on Thursday morning when we do this show. Um, Thursday night, or very early hours of Friday morning, the rain come in and yeah. I think when we did this show last week we said mostly fine weather and, and a good forward track and that we end up getting happened. yeah a lot of rain the heaviest rain I think we've had just over this area anyway yeah. in all of summer it's just come down quick we had nearly 200 mil mm -hmm. by race time on Saturday so that was even with a couple of sun showers on yeah. this on the Saturday mid uh, around lunchtime so it was um the track did an amazing job you know from very yeah. very heavy Probably raised, they had it down as a seven most today. It raised more like a six all day. Oh, that's good. So just it just shows you how good this track is going now at Eagle Farm. So hats off to Jimmy Roberts and his team there getting this track back now to the track that we always wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the racing went on the day, uh, Blue Spinel was really good. Yes. She, um, I don't think you saw her at her best. I think Anne's given her an absolutely really good ride. Black on Beauty loved that bit of cut in the ground. She was, she probably, a few things different, had had a change in the run, she probably the winner. Mm -hmm. But Blue Spinel got the job done. Just goes to show a mare in such good form. Yes. One on ground doesn't suit her. And Malone, he looked the winner a long way out. Yeah. Um, Malone had all the time in the world on him and he got the job done. So they were both, both really good wins and a good day out for the stable. Before we get into the preview, we're going to have our latest pro uh, promotion for the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group. This time it is a prize at uh, the prize is a night at the Pullman Brisbane Airport with a buffet breakfast at the Apron Restaurant. To enter, just go to our Facebook page, look for this week's post about the final gallop, click on the link we provide, and enter your details to go on the draw. Can we enter? No, I will. Can I answer? No. Why? No. Nah. You get enough money off Alex, you don't need a free breakfast. I don't want money, I just want a nice night and breakfast, be unreal. <laughs> anyway, the winner will be announced on uh, next week's show, but it is a great prize, the overnight stay and uh, breakfast at Cav's favourite new restaurant. Yeah, he loved it out there. The food's good, it's mm. really good. I'm actually due for another, hint hint, Alex due for another <laughs> little adventure out there, a little bit of lunch, something like that. It's, it's really good out there. Now it's a, Another well, well worth prize that one. I think all these prizes be. I don't bet the lunch with Cav. No, 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 that was a big prize. But I mean yeah. the rest, really, really good prizes. Okay, on to our preview for Saturday's runners at the Metro meeting at Doombin. The rail will be in the true position. The track is currently a soft five, with mainly fine weather ahead. Or although the brewer, as we mentioned, the bureau aren't forecasting. Um, uh, great at the moment, uh, but if the showers hold off that they do forecast, uh, do we get to a good racing surface? Look, I think we, last week, obviously, that guy that predicted the, the long, hot, dry summer, yeah. I think he was in back in charge again last week when yeah. he said we might get five mil on the Friday and we yeah. got 200. So I don't know who they've got running the, the bureau the bureau this week. Yeah. Um, so if they say we're going to get rain, I'm going to work on a good four. Okay. I reckon we'll have hot dry days, so who knows, like, they just totally get it wrong. They get it wrong more than we do on this show doing tips, so uh, I'm paying no attention to them. Unfortunately, when it comes to this time of year in Queensland, we need to be just, we need to be looking at what's happening all the time every day with far as the weather goes, um, because if they say you're going to get a shower, sometimes you get two inches, who yes. knows. But I'll work off good ground at the moment, we'll just see what the weather brings. Obviously, Dooman is not like Eagle Farm. Any rain close to the meeting or on the day of the races will change the track yep. dramatically. Um, where Eagle Farm can, with, can withstand that heavy rain the day before and we get nice weather, drains beautifully. So totally different surfaces, both tracks racing really, really well. I think we just gotta keep our eye to the sky and at the moment I'm just gonna go with the good four. Okay, we'll start with race three, which is the class three handicap over the 1,350 meters. We will have four runners in this. The first one we'll talk about is Kokonotsu or Morris as he's fondly known as around the stables. He'll carry 59 kilos with Jimmy Orman riding him a barrier five. Um, he is first up on Saturday after a couple of nice trials and a jump out. Uh, he won three races for us last preparation over further but wasn't far off first up over the same trip. Yeah he's in really good, he's in really good nick. You suggest it's probably a touch short for, for what he wants but the low draw helps him. He's going to get a lovely run. He's very fit and well for the start of his prep and he, 
he's come back a better horse. This is the second time now in, into the system that we mm -hmm. have here, and he's enjoying it. He's enjoying his life, this horse. So he'll jump, he'll find a forward position. I don't think he'd lead at 1350, but he'd be just there behind them. Yeah. He'll present, he'll certainly be improved then out to the mile. We'll, we'll suit him better, but he, he's certainly definitely a top four hope in a race like this. Mm -hmm. uh, our second runner we'll talk about is Blazing Boots, 57 and a half kilos, Ryan Maloney on board. He has drawn barrier 10. He's another one that's first up on Saturday following a similar program of trials and jump outs as Kokonotsu, and he did win impressively for us first up uh, at this um, track and distance last preparation. Just drawn a little bit awkward, this guy. He's going really well. He's had a very similar prep, and prep to Kokonotsu, and yet again, it's his second time. Mm -hmm. a second time for a spin around our system here yeah. so last time he was he was good and I think we I think I can train him and plan him a little bit better for the second time around knowing him a little bit better now probably got to, these two are used to racing against each other as well yeah. coconuts and blazing boots probably ride him a little bit conservative from where he's drawn just try and find a midfield or worse spot with a bit of cover and run on he can run well it's just a matter of where he ends up in running but I've been really happy with his jump outs and trials he's very similar to that horse mm -hmm. they've had great preparations and, and they're certainly ready to kick off over this trip Okay, the third he's run. probably a bit sharper, blazing sharper. boots. Okay. I think over the thirteen fifty. I think Coconut Sui, he, he really, he really likes this run to get to the mile. Okay, the third runner we have is Sacred Feel Feeling. She'll carry fifty four and a half kilos. Angela Jones will ride her. She's drawn barrier thirteen. She's another one that is first up after two trials and a jump out. Uh, it was her first racing preparation last time with two wins over further after a fast finishing third on debut at the same trip. Same trip, yeah. Same trip, different track. Yeah. That was the Ipswich. Yeah. Um, lovely filly, lovely mare. This. She's probably the horse I think with the most most upside out of this crew. Okay. I've had a beautiful preparation with her. Um, she's the same preparation as the other two horse we just mentioned. Mm -hmm. To um, sort of two two grass trials, etc., and, and a jump out in between. So she's well ready. She'll be ridden nice and quiet from the gate and ridden to run on. So she just needs the race to pan out for her. She'll be in the second half of the field somewhere. Okay. We'll really see her hitting the line. She, she's a mare I, I particularly like. Mm -hmm. Still not totally sure where her distance, where her optimal distance is, yeah. but she's a mare of very good ability. The fourth one is Snowboom. She's uh, down to 52 kilos with CJ Graham riding and she'll use a, a, a kilo and a half claim. She's drawn barrier three. Uh, she's rock hard fit this mare and is coming off a nice win from the front last start at this same track and trip. Uh, likes her races a little bit spaced and is 23 days between runs. Yeah, it won't hurt. I'll do a good this. Yeah. She's a lovely, a lovely mare this one. I, she went out to the 13.50 for the first time and I must admit under Ryan Maloney's sort of guidance there getting her out to the 1350 i wasn't sure whether to put blinkers on her and keep her at the same trip or put her out so we put her out in distance and, and got the job done and there's been quite a few winners out of that race already well, there's been at least two that i know of coming out of that race already she controls speed up front really well whether she'll control speed here or she just sort of box seats she's somewhere in the first four she's a lovely forward running filly she seems to be able to quick and nicely being up on pace that sort of suits her style of racing so with a light weight we're going to be right up on speed we know she runs the trip she did it well the other day and she'll do it well again so i got i got the bases sort of covered as far as where they're going to be in running yeah. the snow boom up up the front i'd suggest with coconut so not far behind her um blazing boots mid to back and then you got sacred feeling is going to, going to be back so they, they're all going to find their right spot it's just a matter of, of how the race sort of pans out and what luck and running and also how the track plays but yeah. four nice horses for the race snow booms and one up fit um, sacred feeling probably possesses the most ability long term. So, look, I, I, I think the race is a is a tricky race to have an absolute bet in for mine. Yeah, okay. But all four are going very well. Okay. Race five is the cutest jewel prelude for two year old fillies uh, over the eleven hundred meters, eleven hundred and ten meters. Sorry, uh, we've got two runners on debut. Sandy Grip will carry fifty six and a half kilos. Ryan Maloney will ride her. She's drawn at barrier thirteen. She's a lovely pride of Dubai filly that you did buy at uh, last year's Magic Millions Cuter Sale. She's had a good dirt jump out followed by an impressive barrier trial last week, but the barrier won't help her much. Yeah, she's a beautiful filly. This she lovely, is. big, strong filly. We bought her half sister yes. this year at the sales in January. Yeah. So uh, I know the family well. Uh, beautiful, big, strong girl. Got the visitors' draw, and then talked to connections about whether we, we go now okay. or we wait. I'm on, that feeling is probably to, to have a crack at okay. this. I really like her as a racehorse, this filly. I, I, well, I think a, a mid to low draw would have been a, a huge advantage, as it is to most of these two-year-olds. Yeah. 11, yeah. 10 started. Dooman's tricky, uh, but she's got really good early speed. She can put herself into a race early. Um, the, the worry from that wide draw, it's just being posted on a limb, makes life pretty tough. But she's above average. Yeah. A lovely filly that's going to continue to 
to race well after her first up run. She'll train on nicely. She's a filler I've got a good opinion of. The second runner we have is uh, T. She'll carry 56 and a half kilos with Angela Jones riding her. She's drawn barrier three. Uh, she is by American Pharaoh and has won both her official trials uh, this time in and uh, is a nice draw for her. Been very progressive, this filly. She reminds me a lot of the winner we had yesterday, Tora Bella. Okay. Um, just progressing beautifully through the prep. Both trialled the same day, dig and went to the Sunshine Coast and were both dominant going away from their fields. And, and this filly since, I thought her work, on, I've had a good two and a half weeks since that trial now, which is ideal. Mm -hmm. Her work on Tuesday I thought was excellent. She only had a couple of pieces of work since then. And I've been very happy with physically how she's done. She's done very, very well. So the low draw is a plus. And Jones knows her well, rides her every day. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll bounce, she'll posse up, hand to the speed. Uh, whether she's right there or just behind them, it's not going to bother me. Uh, she's a quality filly, got good, got good ability. So I have her on top, top. purely because of gate, yep. um, but she's a filly I particularly like. I think she's one of my better chances on Saturday. Okay, race six is the class six plate over the 1,350 metres. Brentwood will run in this 58 and a half kilos. Angela Jones rides him from barrier seven. Uh, he did win first up at Doombin before a length and a half third at Eagle Farm last start. He did win comprehensively last prep at this track and trip from a similar draw to. Lovely horse, going super. Um, plate conditions don't suit him well. The favourites obviously in very well at the plates and when often when you get these plate races plate races are horses that you get weighted by the amount of wins you've had or the class of horse you are mm -hmm. not the rating you are so if you look at the ratings here the favorites in very very well as opposed to us carrying the same weight um, but what you can't deny this horse is he's a very nice horse around Doombin. he yes. runs his best races at Doombin. he loves the footing under foot he, he, he doesn't run his best races at eagle farm and he always improves third up into a prep so yes. his second up stats are always a little bit iffy but I think that was his best ever second up run <coughs> at a venue that he doesn't normally perform his best at. So he's in for a great prep. Um, I wish this was a class six handicap. I don't always get what we wish for. No. Um, but I love his racing pattern. I think he races forward here either. He sits anywhere, one, two, three, four. He obtains a really good run. Uh, and Jones on knows him well also. So Jimmy Ullman's his, his most successful rider. Yep. He's obviously on the favorite. I think Andrew will do a great job on him. Any rain on the day, this horse, this horse for a Vinny, yeah. he can really get through wet ground. So he's a he's a he's a lovely horse. I, I can't see why he wouldn't run top three. Mm -hmm. Just under the scale of this race, he's just not a um, he's not a, a great win bet. Okay. <coughs> race eight is the open handicap over the 1200 metres. We will have three in this. We'll start with Ranch Hand, uh, 56 and a half kilos. Ryan Maloney will ride him at barrier seven. He is new to our stable and he is a stakes winner as a three-year-old and also a dual group place getter. Uh, he's looking to find some of his old form uh, with his move up north. He did have a good trial last week without being asked to, for too much of an effort. Yeah, I really like him. I thought he raced probably too close to his top last week at the trials. Uh, in a perfect world, would I give him one, one more jump out? Maybe I would have. He's very fit. He worked on the course properly here Tuesday with Antino and his recovery is amazing. So he's a really fit horse. Um, we're just riding back midfield. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to what you saw of Mullane last week. Okay. Riding just to get up behind them and finish the race off. I'd expect him to run top three here. I think he's a nice horse. Okay. Golden Boom will carry 53 kilos. Angela Jones rides him from barrier two. Uh, was uh, third first up in the Magic Million Syndicate race before a little bit of a disappointing fourth last start at the Sunshine Coast on that really hot day over the thousand metres. He's out to 1200 metres here, which should suit and coming off a really good trial. Yeah, he's had a month between runs. Uh, into this which is ideal for him he trialed in between under minimal pressure he went away from late in that trial which that's what i wanted to see i think 1200 back around doom is ideal nice lightweight i think a bit of a, a fresh change with Andrew on him i think is mm -hmm. positive um, i'm really happy with the way the horse is going his work yesterday morning was, uh, was tuesday morning was terrific mm -hmm. he looks really really well so this is I really want to see him bounce back here. He's shown me no signs that he won't. Yep. I'm very happy with him. He's my leading chance in this race. Okay. The third runner is Shamrock Lou. He'll carry 52 kilos, uh, 52 kilos with Bailey Wheeler on board, barrier eight. Uh, was a good second up first in a class six, then went back to the rear last start over the 1,000 metres. He did run on strongly, but he was just too far off them. Yeah, he got back too far, got out too wide. Yep. Messy race. The morals come out and run well since it did switch on a leader bias track the other day. So. Um, I'd forget about that run the other day. His first up run was terrific. It was. I'm not sure if I really want to run him here. I reckon he's drawn awkward here for him. Okay. So we might leave him and see him head to the 
the big cutest meeting at the Gold Coast. Okay, so how are you going to split the meet if he, if he does If the two horses yep. that are run, yep. more than likely he will talk about his ranch hand and, um, and Golden Boom. Right. I've got Golden Boom on top, he's my best chance for the day. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he's my best chance for the day. I just want to see him bounce back and show us. He's, he's a quality horse. He's, he's minimum group three yep. level when he's on song, probably group two. Um, so I want to see him bounce back to that form. He is having a preparation after a tie back, so he's got a few things we've got to work out with him, but uh, I'm really happy with the horse. So he, he's, um, for me, I want to see Golden Boom bounce back Saturday. Okay. We are under the final furlong of this week's final gallop, and as you've alluded to, who was your best winning chance at Doombin on Saturday? Yeah, you know, I tossed up between T and Golden Boom. I like both those horses, where they're drawn, you know, the races they're in, they're my, they're my two picks, and I, I've gone with Golden Boom just because I know I've probably got a bit more of an idea what to expect from him, and she's okay. obviously a first starter. Okay, your best each way chance? Um, each way chance here. Probably go, I'll probably go in the, in the um, in the 1350. Okay. I think Sacred Feeling. Okay. I think she'll run a really good race each way. I mean, we want to see horses make ground with that rails back in the truce. So you got a lot of track to work with. The, the, the negative on that is that it is race one. You don't really yeah. know any perceived bias, but um, she's probably the horse. If she doesn't run top three in that, she's not going to be far away. She's going to have that flashing light on her for the prep. She's come back a, a much, much better mare this time. And we only have one at the Provincials over the weekend, which is a Greylander at the Sunshine Coast on Sunday. How do you think he'll go? Yeah, good. I've taken the blinkers off him. I trolled him in the blinkers the other day, and he just wanted to overdo things a tuck. So I've gone with those back off now. I want to start trying to ride him just a touch quieter if I can, just in behind the speed. Not, not getting back too far, but just sort of stalk the speed rather than making the speed Okay. and see if he can finish his race off. So. I'd be shocked if he can't run top three in that sort of grade that he's in. Okay. And then as we step him out to 1,400 and possibly a mile, that's when you'll see the right horse. So he's, he's an each way play on Sunday, Greylander, yeah. and you'll see me step him out to the 1,400 and he'll be very hard to beat second up. Okay, your best track worker this week? I love the work of uh, Antino and Ranch Hand on the course proper. That was our only bit of work out there. And that was more for Antino's benefit than anyone else's, and I thought their work was outstanding. Both yep. horses recovery, great stride length, great. So. Really happy with what, with what I saw there on Tuesday morning. Okay, and your performance from the stable for the week? Um, pretty, pretty easy to pick Blue Spinel as far as just how good she's going. We've backed off her now for the Winter Carnival. Okay. Um, stopped, I didn't have the temptation to go to the Gold Coast with her for the Mayor's Race. The Military Roads were backed off her for the Brisbane Carnival. Um, but I'm going to go with Mullane. I thought he was the, the right choice for the team at um, the, Stallions, the Victorian Alliance Stallion Syndicate there to allow us to geld him, yeah. um, bring him back as a geld. It's his first run. He's been a real work in progress, this bloke. And yes. just to see him win, he didn't win by a big margin, but what I can tell you all out there, that won't be the last win you see of him at this part of the year. Okay, now courtesy of Player, but it is their stable special offer for this week. Here is that offer for you on screen now. Now it is time for Cavs Corner, which is supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group for the second week in a row. The old saying goes, there's nothing surer than the second leg of a failed Cav multi, and that rang true again with Blue Spinell winning after Hidden Wealth missed his first leg, as we just alluded to. Let's see what he's got for us this week. Welcome to Cavs Corner for this week. Last week, one leg again. Anyway, we move on to this week. <coughs> We'll go to Doombin on Saturday. We'll go Sacred Feeling, a place, into Golden Boom, a win. Good punning, guys. So he's gone with your each way bet, Sacred Feeling, a place, into Golden Boom, a win, and uh, I think you'd be pretty happy about that. I am. Yeah, yeah I'm very happy about us. My each way and my, my best chance for the weekend, and yeah. look, it won't be without the realms of possibility. I mean, Sacred Feeling is the one you're gonna see her back in the back third of the field, and. She's going to be looking for runs, but when she when she gets let's go, she's going to hit the line terrific. So yeah. it's just whether she'll be able to make up the leeway depending on how far she gets back and what sort of drag she gets into the race. Yeah. Always you know with Doom and it's it's that it's a bit of the race from the 600 to the 300, which can make or break these horses in the back third. They've got to be able to get on the back of the right horses, got to improve, make ground without covering excess ground. And if they can do that, they can finish off well. So I love her as a race horse, and I think Golden Boom well, he's going to make his own luck. He'll be up in the firing line and. He's in terrific shape. The only thing I can say is it's like we're doing this outside of Morris's box because we're a long way away from Golden Boom and Sacred Feeling. They can't hear what we're saying. No pressure on them. Absolutely. It'll yeah. be a big plus for both. Exactly. Okay, good luck on Saturday, Tony. Once again, some really good chances and multiple races across the card. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Best of luck.